أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين خلق الجن والإنس لإبادته وأمرهم بتوحيده وطاعته وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الصادق الناسه الأمين فبلغ رسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وجاهد في الله حق الجهاد وقد تركنا على مثل البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين وبعد All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created the jinn, the human being, for his worship and he has commanded them with his obedience and forbidden them from the things that he has made impermissible. I testify that there is none that deserves the true right of worship besides him alone, tabaraka wa ta'ala. And I also testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a slave and his messenger. Indeed, he conveyed the message. He fulfilled the trust. He advised this ummah and he strove in Allah's cause with the correct striving. He left us upon a clear path. This night is as bright as its day. This is his sunnah. No one goes against this path except that this individual will be destroyed. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, his family, his companions, and whosoever holds on to his sunnah until the establishment of the last hour. As to what proceeds, my beloved brothers and sisters in Al-Islam, rahimanillahi wa iyyakum, may Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala shower his mercy upon me and upon you. The first thing that I command you with on this blessed day of Jum'ah is to have taqwa of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. To be conscious of Allah, the mighty and the majestic. To revere Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has blessed us to be Muslims. And he has given us for us opportunities throughout our lives. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala continues to bless us with these opportunities. The second thing that I would like you to reflect upon is the narration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is collected by Imam Muslim under authority of the companion whose name was Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said Badiru bil a'mali fitanan qakitu'i al-layli al-mudhlim يُسْبِحُ رَجُلْ مُؤْمِنًا وَيُمْسِ كَافِرًا أو يُمْسِ مُؤْمِنًا وَيُسْبِحُ كَافِرًا يَبِئُ دِينَهُ بِأَرَضٍ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he began this hadith by saying بَعْدِرُوا a verb in the command form وَالْمُبَادَرَ كَمَا قَالَ أَهْلُ الْعِلْمِ and the word Al-Mubadara, as the people of knowledge, they say, Ma'naha Al-Musara'a, Wantihaz, Al-Fursa, Al-Lati Ataqa Allah, Fala Tudayya'ha, Fala Tudayya'ha, Bil-Qusul, Wal-Khumul, Fa'innaha Tadhab, Wala Turja. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he began this hadith by saying Badiru. And the meaning of this word, 
as a people of knowledge, Ahlul Ilm, they say it means to race, to compete, to try hard, to try hard and to hold on to an opportunity which Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala gives you. And do not waste this opportunity by being lazy or being neglectful or by procrastinating. For indeed, this opportunity will go away and it may never come back. The opportunity may go away and it may never come back. Badiru bil amali fitanan kakit'i layl al Muslim. Race in doing good deeds before al fitanan, before fitanan, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned here trials and tribulations, not trial or tribulation. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not say fitna; he said fitanan in the plural form. Racing, doing good deeds before trials and tribulations come upon you. Like the darkness of the night. Sheikh Salih Al Fawzan, Hafidahullah Ta'ala, he mentions darkness of the night, meaning that people will not be able to see the true reality of their religion. They will not be able to see these trials and these tribulations. Because when those trials come upon him, he's going to be busy with those trials. He's going to be busy with those tribulations and he's not going to be able to do the good deeds that he was able to do before those trials come. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Yusbihu rajul mu'minan wa yumsi kathiran. That a man, he would wake up as a believer and by the end of the night he is a disbeliever. What a scary affair that in one day a person can wake up a believer and by the end of that day he can be a disbeliever. Or by the evening he is a believer and when he wakes up in the morning he is a disbeliever. Very quick. Badiru bil a'mal. So race in doing good deeds. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Yabiu dina hu bi aradin min al dunya." That the individual will sell his religion. He will sell his deen. He will sell his Islam. For what? For a worldly gain. For a piece of the dunya. The reality of what we live in today where the believers are busy with taking care of their families, working hard, not being able to fulfill the obligations of their religion and understand Islam properly. Time comes and it goes. Opportunity comes and it goes. And no time is different from the time that came before for that individual. Every day is the same for him because he's busy striving and struggling just trying to get by. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah wa ta'ala informs us, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَّةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَرْضُهَا وَأَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضُ وَإِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And strive and race to the forgiveness of your Lord. And strive for paradise which Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has made, created for whom? For the believers. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He says in another verse, وَسَابِكُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَّةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ أَرْضُهَا كَأَرْضِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَإِدَّتْ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُلِهِ ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِهِ مَا يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ ذُو الْفَضْلِ الْعَذِيمِ And be foremost, be the first to do what? To seek the forgiveness of your Lord. And be the foremost to seek paradise, those gardens, beneath it rivers flow. Gardens that 
similar to the, the earth which Allah wa ta'ala has created for those who believe in Allah and His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this is a bounty that Allah gives to whom He pleases my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam we must agree that when it comes to racing and doing good deeds that there was there wasn't anyone that was foremost and better than the companions radiallahu anhu when it comes to doing good deeds and exemplifying and holding on to those opportunities there wasn't anyone to emulate and wasn't anyone that was more proficient in understanding these opportunities and holding on to these good deeds than the companions radiallahu anhum Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he confirms وَسَابِكُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُحَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِالْإِحْسَانِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُمْ Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he says and the first and foremost the beginning people from the muhajirun, those people who made hijrah from Mecca to Medina and the helpers in Medina, the Ansar and those people who follow them what did they do? they raced to grab opportunities they raced in doing good deeds they never let the opportunity go by them they were the first and foremost in taking up these opportunities Allah wa ta'ala he, he confirms radiallahu anhum wa radu an Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. And then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions before, "Waladina tabaruhum bihsan," and those people who do what? They follow them. Those people who come after them, and they follow them in what? In doing righteous deeds. Follow who them? You follow the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he confirmed the hadith that is collected by Imam Bukhari and Muslim. And the authority of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an Khayrun nas qarni Thumma alladhina yalunahum Thumma alladhina yalunahum The best of people are whom? It is my generation The companions radiallahu anhum Then those that come after them, the tabi'un And those that come after them, atba'a tabi'een Those were the three best generations So where does the individual look When he wants to please Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala Based on what we've mentioned from the ayat and the hadith Where does the individual look as an example of how he should emulate and How he should please Allah wa ta'ala He looks to the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And his companions radiallahu anhum He doesn't look anywhere else There is no answer for this person, no success for this person In anything else no matter what time he lives in, no matter what generation he comes in, no matter how old he is or how young he is, if it is that he's looking for guidance, if it is that he is looking for the right way, if it is that he wants to please Allah wa ta'ala, then he goes back. He goes back to what the companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum used to do. How they implemented Islam, how they understood Islam. What did they do when Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala gave them opportunities? How did they take advantage of these times? And if it is that we follow them, then we're going to be able to reap those rewards and earn the pleasure of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. For there are too many times that opportunities come and they go away. They come and they go away and we feel regretful. We feel regretful. I'm sure that every human being here, old or young, male or female, can reflect that there was something in the past where there was an opportunity for you. Whatever the opportunity may be, that, uh, that opportunity came and you were not able to benefit from it. And you felt as though you lost something. And it may never come back. It's gone. It may never come back. I missed out that, that opportunity. I missed out on that reward. I missed out on getting the opportunity to earn some more money. I missed out the opportunity to do something that I wanted to do and accomplish. Now it may never come back. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, there are certain times in the life of a Muslim where Allah wa has made the stakes 
and the rewards more virtuous than other times. There are certain times in the life of a Muslim and certain places where Allah tabarak wa ta'ala makes the rewards more virtuous, more rewarding, more opportunities than other times and other places. From the places, there are no place, there is no place that is better than Baytul Haram. There is no place that is better than the house of Allah in Mecca and the Prophet's masjid in Medina and Masjid al Aqsa in terms of place, in terms of time, then Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is going to give us another opportunity if it is that Allah has written for us that we will live for the next three weeks to get that opportunity again. The month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan where I'm sure that last year when the month of Ramadan finished, you felt as though you did not accomplish anything. You felt as though you made a mistake. You felt as though you wasted your time. You felt as though you should have recited more Quran. You felt as though you should have given more sadaqah. You felt as though you should have prayed more supererogatory prayers. It went and you felt hurt in your heart for the true believer. That the opportunity went. And you feel sad and you cry. And you wish that the opportunity will come back again. And alhamdulillah, if it is that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has written for us to witness this Ramadan this year, the opportunity will be there again. For us, opportunity is like no other time. A month where it is easy to do good deeds because Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He has chained the shayateen. And He has opened the gates of paradise. And he has closed the gates of Jahannam. Not for everyone, only for the believer. Only for the believer. So does the individual, does a true believer, does he live throughout this time, this month, like he lived throughout the other 11 months? As we approach Ramadan, if it is that we were to look at the lives of the companions radiallahu anhum, three aspects concerning Ramadan. Let's look at three aspects concerning the month of Ramadan when it came to the companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum. The time that we live in right now, today. How they prepared for Ramadan, before Ramadan. What did they do in Ramadan? And what did they do in the end of Ramadan? And this is the opportunity that we have today, now. Isti'dad. Isti'dad li Ramadan. Preparation for Ramadan. Getting ready for Ramadan. Not like no other time. Does a person work the way that he worked out of Ramadan when Ramadan comes, if it is that he has the ability to choose? What was the example of the companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum when it came firstly to preparing for Ramadan they always sought and made dua to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala that they will be able to see Ramadan they used to beg Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala in books that are authentic that describes the actions of the Prophet sallallahu that describes the actions of the companions radiallahu anhum that up to six months before Ramadan, they used to beg Allah wa ta'ala that they will get to see the month of Ramadan. Because they knew of the virtues that Ramadan contained. They know that the stakes in the month of Ramadan was greater than any other time. They know that the forgiveness in the month of Ramadan was like no other type of forgiveness. So they used to beg Allah wa ta'ala that they will see Ramadan. When the month of Ramadan came, the second part, what did they do in Ramadan? So the first thing is that now we should start preparing. We should start planning. How am I going to spend Ramadan this year? And it is okay if the husband and the wife and the children, they sit down together as a family. And they have shura, they make shura. 
with a pen and a paper and they start putting things in, in place. They start making plans of how they're going to spend Ramadan or how they're going to prepare for Ramadan. Am I going to shop in Ramadan? Am I going to go to the groceries all of the time in Ramadan? Am I going to spend all of my days and nights cooking in Ramadan and preparing food for people? And is this what is what is recommended? Is this what is what is the example of the companions of Allah anhum in preparing for Ramadan? No, this wasn't the example. As the month of Ramadan came and they witnessed for Ramadan, if Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave them the tawfiq. How were they in the month of Ramadan? We know that Ramadan, its days, it is far to fast. It is far to fast, as siyam or as sawm. And in Islam, Arabic words sometimes have two meanings a linguistic meaning and a legislative meaning. As for the, ling as for the linguistic meaning of the word siyam or sawm, it is al-habs and al-nafs. It is to confine oneself, to restrain oneself. The linguistic meaning of the word song, linguistically. As for the legislative meaning of the word song or fasting, it is habs al-nafs and al-muftarat. Min tulu' al-fajr al-thani ila ghurub al-shams. And al-muftarat Washahawat. The legislative meaning of the word fasting, so we mentioned the linguistic meaning, which is to confine oneself, to restrain oneself. The legislative meaning, it is to confine or to restrain oneself from food and from drink and from the desires. Not just food and drink, from food and drink and anything that will be made impermissible out of the month of Ramadan, he continues throughout Ramadan, the days of fasting, to stay away from those things. From the breaking of dawn until the sun sets. There are things that Allah wa ta has made impermissible at certain times, which is halal at other times. Impermissible for the person throughout the days of fasting from those things is having relation with his wife. Because out of fasting, it is permissible for him. As Allah wa ta'ala, he says, أُحِلَّ لَكُمْ لَيْلَةَ الصِّيَامِ أَرَّفَثْ إِلَى نِسَائِكُمْ هُنَّ لِبَاسٌ لَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لِبَاسٌ لَهُنْ عَلِمَ اللَّهُ أَنَّكُمْ كُنْتُمْ تَخْتَانُونَ أَنفُسَكُمْ فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَأَفَا عَنْكُمْ فَالْآنَ بَاشِرُ Allah Ta'ala says in this verse here, He says, It has been made permissible for you. Why did Allah Ta'ala said in this particular verse, Why did Allah Ta'ala said in this particular verse, I have made it permissible for you. It meant that it was what? Impermissible before. On the nights of fasting. Arrafath ila nisa'ikum. That you may have relations with your wives. That you may now sleep with your wives. What a great favor upon you and me. If it is that you did not know that before this verse was revealed, fasting or the time for eating and drinking and muftarat and having relations with your wives, before this verse was revealed for the companions of Allah anhum was only from the time of Maghrib until the Isha Salah came in. You understand that? Only from the time of Maghrib, when the Adhan calls, when it comes in, until, until Isha came in. This was the only period of time that the companions عنهم, were able to eat, to drink, and to have relations with their wives, and do anything that was permissible out of fasting. Subhanallah. Yet Allah wa ta'ala made you and I and gave you and I such a great fursa, opportunity. It has been made permissible for you to have relations with your wives. Allahu Akbar.
So Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala in the same verse, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala mentions the time of fasting. The time of fasting from the breaking of dawn until Maghrib. So this is a great favor from Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala upon you and me. So how the companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum, in terms of safeguarding their fast, and an example for you and for me, how they used to plan as knowing now the linguistic meaning of fasting and the legislative meaning of fasting, then you and I have experienced in our lives, and we know this to be a fact, that staying away from food and drink is one of the easiest things in the month of Ramadan. We do it every year, Allahu Akbar, with the tawfiq of Allah. People who are non-Muslims say, how can you do such a thing? How can you stay away from food and drink all day? You don't drink anything? SubhanAllah, you and I, who are Muslims, who fast every year with Allah's tawfiq, you and I know that this is easy for us. But what is difficult, what was, was what was difficult for the companions radiallahu anhum. They used to be concerned about backbiting and slandering and the other things. Cursing, looking at evil things, listening to evil things. That was the companions radiallahu anhum in their times, the best of people in that time. What can you say for you and me in these times? More so, the month of Ramadan this year, as summer or spring has just started, it's going to get hot. Summer is approaching. How are we planning to safeguard our eyes and our ears? The summertime is worse for our eyes and our ears. Everyone is outside, coming outside, playing music, partying, especially in communities like this. Different cultures, people hanging out. How are we planning to stay away? Have you thought about it? That it's going to be very hard? How am I going to stay away from this? How am I planning to safeguard myself, my wife, my children? I'm going to be fasting throughout the day. Will the companions, radiallahu anhum, because of staying away from their desires, they used to stay in the masjid throughout the days. They used to stay in the masjid to safeguard themselves throughout the days of Ramadan. And used to be in the masjid in the nights, which is fard, and used to be in the masjid in the night so that they can stand in prayer, prayer qiyamulay, which is sunnah. Just to safeguard themselves from their desires. Safeguard themselves from falling into sins. So my advice in regards to this particular point that we mentioned is for those people who have the ability, then start making preparations to safeguard your fast. Because these things, it doesn't nullify your fast, but it takes away from the rewards of your fasting. As we know that the Prophet وسلم, mentioned in the Hadith Qudsi, كُلُّ عَمْلِ ibn Adam يُدُعَفْ أَلْحَسْنَ بِأَشْرِ أَمْثَالِهَا إِلَّا سَبَمِيَ دِعْفْ All of the actions of the son of Adam are multiplied. From 10 to 700 times. Then Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said, إِلَّا الصَّوْمْ Except fasting. فَإِنَّهُ لِي وَأَنْ أَجَزِي For indeed fasting is for me, and I reward the fasting person as I see fit. Why? Because this fasting person is leaving off his food and his drink for Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. He has to make the intention from the night before, the niyyah from the night before, to leave off the food and the drink and the desires for Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Meaning that only Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala knows what this person is doing when he's by himself. Because when he's by himself, he can eat and he can drink. When he's by himself, he can look at the haram. When he's by himself, he can listen to the haram. So Allah wa ta'ala rewards the fasting person based on his intention and his action and what is in his heart and what he exemplifies as Allah wa ta'ala sees fit for that fasting person. Allahu Akbar. Ya ayuhal ladheena amanu hal adullukum ala tijaratin tunjikum min adhabin alim tu'minuna billahi wal tu'minuna billahi wal yawm al akhir وَتُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنْفُسِكُمْ 
ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرُ لَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ O believers, so I not show you to a trade. هَلْ أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى تِجَارَةٍ A commerce. Allah is speaking to you and me. هَلْ أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى تِجَارَةٍ تُنْجِيكُمْ مِنْ عَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ That will save you from a known punishment. That you believe in Allah and His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَتُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ And you strive in Allah's cause. بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ But with your wealth and with yourselves. ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ This is better for you only if it is that you know. Is there a better bargain than the month of Ramadan? For you and for me? Is there a better opportunity? There is no better opportunity. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعنا بما فيه من البيان وذكر الحكيم أقول هذا القول واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين مبعد. So we mentioned two aspects of the lives of the companions concerning Ramadan, preparation for Ramadan, and when Ramadan came, what they did. And this is just a short synopsis. It's not possible for us within 30, 35 minutes to say everything that the companions رضي الله عنهم did. But we just strike examples so that we may pay attention and take heed. Some things that are important. How did the companions radiallahu anhum anticipate the end of Ramadan? What were their actions concerning Ramadan? Allah Tabarahu Ta'ala informs us, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا أَتَوْا وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَتْ أَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِهُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ وَهُمْ لَهَا سَابِقُونَ In this verse, Allah Tabarahu Wa Ta'ala says, those people who give what they gave, from sadaqah, from doing good deeds, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا أَتَوْا وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَتْ Imagine they gave for Allah what they gave. They did good deeds from all the righteous deeds and their hearts were fearful. وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَتْ After doing these deeds, their, their hearts were fearful. أَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهُمْ أَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُونَ Why were they fearful? Because they knew that they were going to go back to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. What did the Mufassirun mention concerning this verse? That the companions radiallahu anhum you and I agreed that they were the best in doing good deeds. They were the foremost in doing good deeds. They were the most sincere in doing good deeds. They were no better than them in doing good deeds. But when they did these good deeds, when the deeds were done, they were fearful that the deeds would not be accepted by Allah. Subhanallah. They were fearful that these deeds were not going to be accepted by Allah. What are the actions of yourselves and myself that when we do a good deed, we become satisfied. When we do something, we think that we did so much. We think that we did enough and we're ready to go back out after Ramadan finishes. Subhanallah. The deed is done, we think that we did. We fulfill Allah's rights. Look at the example of the Prophet ﷺ concerning the best deed, which is the salah. The first thing that a human being will be questioned about Yawm al from the actions is the salah. The Prophet ﷺ, after coming out of the salah, after doing such a great deed, and no one had more khushu than the Prophet ﷺ when he prayed. He finished the salah, he gave salams. What was his first thing that he said or he did? Istighfar. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. After doing a good deed, how did the Prophet ﷺ follow this good deed? With istighfar. And the companions, radiallahu anhum, they were scared that this deed will not be accepted by Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. So do not become fascinated with your deeds. And do not feel that you can fulfill the rights of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Because it's not possible to fulfill these rights. It's not possible to fulfill the rights of Allah. Prepare for Ramadan. In the month of Ramadan, it is a month, first and foremost, to be sincere with Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And have good thoughts of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. 
It is not the month of coming together in the masjid and having feasts and hanging out and wasting time. It is the month of standing in prayer. It is the month of studies for those people who do not study throughout the rest of the year. Then the month of Ramadan is an opportunity for the community to establish classes, to teach the people about Allah wa ta'ala, to teach the people about fasting, to teach the people about Ramadan, to teach the people about itikaf, to teach the people how to recite the Quran. Because throughout the year, we're not doing it. Throughout the year, we're not doing it. These days that are coming up to Ramadan, it is a time to teach the people about the ahkam of fasting. The ahkam of fasting and how to break fast and the different types of people that are excused from fasting. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala give us understanding and may help us to be those people who race in doing good deeds and may help us to be from those people who grab the opportunity. Who grab the opportunity and not be from those people who are going to feel sorry if it is that we live to the end of Ramadan or if it is first and foremost that we witness Ramadan بارك الله فيكم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك واقيم الصلاة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر